and move on to our next speaker who could not join us today, actually. Um, Dr. K. Guan Yeo at, from the National University of Singapore um, is the chief executive of the health system there and the professor of medicine and oncology at the National University of Singapore. I hear that he is um, taking care of the, the coronavirus situation um, at, in Singapore, so is unable to join us. But he has sent his video and um, he will be talking to us about novel molecular risk stratification tools in intestinal metaplasia uh, from the Singaporean experience. Here you go. Greetings from Singapore. I'm KG Yeo from the National University of Singapore. I would like to thank Robert and Juha for their very kind invitation to attend the Stanford Gastric Cancer Summit. I'm very sorry that due to the coronavirus situation that I'm unable to travel to Stanford, and I hope to meet all of you very soon. So in this talk, I will be describing our experience in surveillance of intestinal metaplasia in Singapore and describing how we propose to identify the very high risk cases of intestinal metaplasia. I hope you'll have a chance to visit us on our campus sometime in the near future. This is the outline for today's uh, talk. I'll be describing uh, intestinal metaplasia, uh, our research program, GSET, Gastric Cancer Epidemiology Program, Genetic Alterations in Intestinal Metaplasia, and a proposed validation of a novel molecular test. There's a general view that gastric cancer cases are declining, but while that is true of the age standardized rates, in fact, the total number of cases in Singapore and in the world are still increasing because of the aging population. Survival for gastric cancer is poor, and as you can see in the uh, two graphs, the top frame shows international five-year survival, and the bottom frame, Singapore five-year survival. Uh, in both cases, the survival is for gastric cancer is quite poor, uh, in comparison with cancers with good five-year survival, such as uh, prostate cancer, thyroid cancer, and uh, breast cancer. So gastric cancer is curable if it's diagnosed at an early stage, uh, but the poor prognosis is because of late presentation. So we know from Korea's cascade that intestinal metaplasia is associated with increased risk for developing gastric cancer, and that intestinal metaplasia uh, increases the risk of uh, future development of gastric cancer by about six times. Uh, in a previous study published in BMJ, the authors showed that approximately one out of 39 patients with intestinal metaplasia develop gastric cancer within 20 years. And on the left hand side, we see that there is considerable heterogeneity in, in intestinal metaplasia. Uh, for example, there's complete and incomplete intestinal metaplasia. So in the GSEP or Gastric Cancer Epidemiology Program, uh, we aim to study predictive risk factors from 3,000 high-risk cohort. Uh, we wanted to investigate the natural history of early gastric neoplasia development in people with and without pre-malignant conditions and we aim to develop a cost-effective screening algorithm to be used in our population in Singapore. So GSEP uh, took over 10 years. Uh, we started the study in 2004 and the study uh, completed five years of uh, surveillance in 2016. And it consisted of a high-risk cohort of 3,000 subjects. They were all Chinese, aged above 50. Uh, with quality control features of um, uh, single reference pathologists, uh, endoscopic uh, videos, and a web-based uh, oracle database, as well as verific verification of data against the, so the source document. The endpoints in the study were high-grade dysplasia, intramucosal carcinoma, and adenocarcinoma. And the study procedures are shown on the right frame. Uh, so 
the patients all had at least three endoscopies at year zero, uh, then at year three and year five with blood samples taken at baseline and at year five. Uh, so these were the characteristics of the study population. Uh, male gender was about 49%, past and current smokers were about 21%, uh, helicobacter infection history was present at about 43% um, and the uh, findings at baseline about 43% had intestinal metaplasia which was then graded by the OGIM scoring system. And over five years of surveillance in the study, uh, 21 patients developed uh, de novo early gastric neoplasia, defined as either adenocarcinoma or high-grade dysplasia. Out of these 21 cases, uh, 19 were intestinal class, uh, uh, type gastric cancer by Lorraine classification. And uh, by AJCC staging, uh, 8 were stage 1 and 13 were stage 0. So the incidence rate of developing early gastric neoplasia was 0.16 percent per year. So the risk factors uh, in this study were age, helicobacter pylori infection history, uh, positive uh, serum pepsinogen index and positive uh, atrophic gastritis histology scores, uh, and intestinal metaplasia. So if intestinal metaplasia were present, uh, the Adjusted hazard ratio for developing early gastric neoplasia was 5.8 times compared to if IM was negative, and this risk increased with the old game stage. So this slide shows that with increasing old game stage, uh, the risk of developing early gastric neoplasia uh, increased, and this increase was particularly marked after OGIM stage 2. Uh, in addition, the uh, subtype of intestinal metaplasia, we found that uh, incomplete subtype uh, pose uh, increased risk for developing early gastric neoplasia. And among the group of uh, patients with OGIM 2 to 4, uh, those with uh, further significant smoking history are at additional increased risk of progressing towards early gastric neoplasia. So then we looked at the uh, medium time from developing uh, from intestinal metaplasia to develop early gastric neoplasia and in the OGIM 3 to 4 group which is the red figure uh, the median time to develop early gastric neoplasia was 1.6 years, while for the OGIM2 group represented by the blue figure, the median time was 4.2 years. So in other words, uh, with a higher OGIM stage, the median time to develop early gastric cancer was shorter. Uh, and 75% of the early gastric neoplasias occurred before 2 years in patients with OGIM stage 3 to 4. So I'll go on to describe the genetic alterations in patients with intestinal metaplasia. And we did a genomic profiling study of intestinal metaplasia that was uh, published in Cancer Cell, where we uh, sequenced uh, 148 uh, subjects uh, in this study. Uh, we found that, uh, in general, intestinal metaplasias exhibit low mutation burdens compared to gastric cancer uh, and that um, clonal mutations are, are uncommon in intestinal metaplasia. Uh, there were increased uh, copy number alterations uh, and shortening of telomeres uh, in intestinal metaplasia and um, IM exhibited uh, global hypermethylation uh, relative to normal gastric samples. So we found that uh, IM specimens from different anatomic locations in the, in the same patient had uh, common mutational signature. This suggests that 
The IMs in the antrum and cardia may be caused by similar or related environmental exposure, so for example, by helicobacter infection. So in conclusion, we found three main genomic alterations associated with the progression of IM2 gastric cancer, these being increased mutation allele frequency, shortening of telomere length, and copy number alterations. And we think that uh, in combination, these genomic markers could be used to identify a subset of IM patients at very high risk of gastric cancer. So we went on to consider whether a molecular tests uh, can help us to identify subjects with a very high risk of gastric cancer among the intestinal metaplasia population. So we uh, propose a prospective study to validate this new molecular test, a study called GSEP2. The primary objective is to determine whether the novel molecular test can identify prospectively within patients with intestinal metaplasia a subgroup of patients with very high risk of dysplasia or gastric cancer. And the study hypothesis is that the incidence of dysplasia and gastric cancer cases would be higher in the molecular test positive group than in the molecular test negative group. So this study would uh, be conducted over four years. At baseline, an uh, endoscopy, biopsy, urobreath test and blood collection would be performed. Uh, it would enroll subjects with uh, high risk intestinal metaplasia defined as OGIM stage 2 to 4. Uh, uh, the subjects would be over 50 years and could be of any race or gender. The study would be uh, performed over four years uh, with the molecular test performed at baseline and surveillance endoscopies and biopsies at years two and four. The endpoints would be high-grade dysplasia or adenocarcinoma and uh, we are testing the hypothesis that uh, there would be more cases of high-grade dysplasia or adenocarcinoma in the molecular test positive group as opposed to molecular test negative group. So this is the proposed format of the molecular test. We'll be measuring somatic driver mutations, copy number alterations, telomere lengths as shown. And uh, the biopsy protocol would follow the updated Sydney system with uh, four frozen uh, biopsies as shown. And uh, the, this prospective study would be performed across seven international sites in Hong Kong, Japan, Singapore, Korea, Taiwan, Indonesia, and in uh, Stanford University, USA. So I'll conclude here. Um, after eradication of helicobacter, there is still substantial risk of gastric cancer due to precancerous lesions. We feel that surveillance is indicated and in view of the wide range of risks, it would be ideal if we could focus surveillance on the highest risk groups. The GSEP study I described earlier provides the evidence for risk stratification using OGIM. Uh, we have further identified the genetic alterations in IM that are associated with progression to gastric cancer and we propose a prospective study to validate this new molecular test in order to provide the data to guide future practice. I'd like to uh, acknowledge the large number of investigators uh, involved in the GSEP study, in the molecular tests, as well as in the new prospective GSEP2 study. Thank you very much for your kind attention.